Hi. My name is Sandy Carbonari. I'm a pediatrician, and I'm the immediate past president of the Connecticut chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. I speak in opposition to allowing pharmacists to administer influenza vaccine to children under the age of 18, but in favor of granting administration authority to appropriately trained and credentialed medical assistants. This legislation to permit pharmacists to vaccinate children, if enacted, would fragment care and undermine the concept of the patient-centered medical home, which is the linchpin of Connecticut's state innovation model to improve health outcomes while containing costs. Pediatric practices are responsible for tracking the medical needs of the children, reaching out to families to ensure that the children are appropriately vaccinated and cared for, and documenting these vaccinations. Appropriately trained and credentialed medical assistants are active members of the office care team. Their ability to administer vaccines within the pediatric practice under direct supervision would permit practices to provide more services in a shorter period of time while maintaining the same high standards for care quality. CDC data indicate that the highest rates of flu immunization occur in the age groups that are most frequently seen in their medical home. Not uncommonly, the need for vaccination is, the, is what brings an adolescent into the office. This age group is the most difficult to, to get in for their, their regular um, checkups and immunizations. S getting them into the office in any way, especially through vaccination, enables an assessment of the child's physical and developmental well-being, screening for depression, school problems, domestic violence, drug abuse, or other potential threats to the continued health of the child and for the provision of anticipatory guidance to the family. None of this would be accomplished during a vaccination by a pharmacist. Influenza vaccination of children is more complicated than that of adults. There are two different types of vaccines and multiple variables, including age, medical history, allergies, and previous immunizations. For instance, if a child is under eight, now I understand that this is going to be 12 and up, but if a child is under eight and has never received a flu shot, they need two doses for the current season. Pediatric practices review each child's medical record, provide information to the family about the options for the child, and make sure that, that those needing them do get them. As a pediatrician, I'm responsible for the process of shared decision making with the family, and I'm uncomfortable with not completing the process and actually giving the medication entering into the, into the record for documentation. Allowing credentialed medical assistants to administer vaccines. Doctor, can you please summarize, please? Okay, Thanks. That, 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 that's my last two seconds, um, but allowing the medical um, assistance to administer vaccines under direct supervision enhances the functioning of our pediatric medical home. Thank you. And I okay. Yeah. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for your testimony. I know you're standing in, and I really appreciate you coming in this afternoon. You know, in the final sentences that you said before your time, when your time I just went off, I just want to make sure I heard that clearly, because the time I went off on one side and you were wrapping up your testimony, you said as far as going to the second half of the bill about medical assistance, that medical assistance would administer the vaccine under direct supervision. Correct. Right. Could you elaborate what is this direct supervision for us? It, it, it would be that when, when the child was, was in the office, that an order would be given um, as far as exactly which vaccine um, the child would need, and um, it would always be with a physician or um, it, uh, pediatric provider, APRN, PA, present. So that's, that's what, what direct supervision would be. So in your opinion, a direct supervision means in, in, in an office with, let's say, three, four providers, one of them happens to be, you know, uh, an APRN, a PA, and an MD, and there's also, you know, two, three medical assistants, that medical assistant would administer the vaccine to, that, to the individual. Mm -hmm. Just bec and, and the supervision is adequate that there is an APRN or a physician in that office at the same time. There's been no dialogue between the MA and the doctor whether this person should or should not receive the vaccine. Oh, no, 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 there, there would be. There, there would have to be some direction given that um, a particular child needs a particular dose, type, et cetera, of, vac uh, of vaccine. Okay, so I think that's where we have, we, uh, some of us are having some difficulty with as w the supervision part. So just 
just walk through it for us that this the person enters the office mm -hmm. and needs this vaccine so that vaccine is determined by the APRN or the MD as to what the vaccination needs to be correct and then only the administration part, the physical administration part, is done by the medical assistant. Correct. But the evaluation is done by an APRN on an MD. Oh, absolutely. Right. On the day of the visit or ahead of time? Um, I, 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 the, you, you mean the decision on what the child needs? Correct. Right. That, that probably could be done ahead of time, but um, it would be more, more likely to be done, at least in the office setting that I've worked in would be done that day. Okay. okay. Um, and, and you also need the, you know, the parent to give permission, you know, to, to sign also. Oh, of course, yeah. So, that. so that's all part of the whole process. Right, right. So, but, but that the MA, the medical assistant, is not making his or her independent decision. Oh, no, not at all. That this person needs the vaccine. So it is just the, the physical administration is done by the MA, but the evaluation and the decision making process, which is very critical, that right. this, this, this person has a, has a temperature, the person has a sore throat, so should not be receiving the vaccine today. Yes. That is not made by the medical assistant, is made by the APRN or the MD in the office. Correct. And the MD or the APRN gives the green signal to the MA to, to administer the vaccine. Is yes. that how you envision the entire thing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So in, in, your, in this thought process, so that we are all clear, you know, when a medical assistant is in an office and at that particular time the provider is not there, you know, he's coming in, coming in from the hospital, making rounds or the other, and this person just walks in saying, I need my vaccine, that's what I'm here for, I'm healthy, I'm healthy as a horse, blah, 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 but yep. that MA cannot give the vaccine because either the provider is not there and the provider has not seen the, the patient yet. Correct. Okay. How does the MA then giving the vaccine help the, the, the provider? I, I know that is the whole idea that the, the physician is so busy, wrapped mm -hmm. up in mm -hmm. seeing patients, and rightfully so, that the MA administering the vaccine helps the entire process. Right. If the MD has to see the patient, and, or the APRN, when I say MD, I'm interchanging it with APRN, and then only the MA has to administer the vaccine, you still feel that there is there's value in that process? Yes, because I, I, I would say the many of those vaccines would be given in the context of a well-child visit. So it would be you're doing your well-child visit, you're doing everything, and the child needs a, a flu vaccine. Instead of me taking the time to go get it, draw it out, you know, do all the physical stuff, I can be on to working with the next family while the MA is actually doing um, that. And, and they also, during well-child visits, they, they will do you know, finger sticks, you know, various things like that, which are, um, you know, physical hands-on work with, with the patients. Thank you. I think you made that very clear that, you know, it is not done independently, Correct. A, yes. and it is not done without the, uh, uh, the APRN or the MD giving the green signal. Being actively involved. Right, in the they're actively involved. Yes. Somehow there's this feeling that, you know, they, they are in a, uh, operating in a vacuum, oh, no. and you're making it very clear that that does not happen, and they're working together in the administration of the vaccine. Correct. Thank you. Now, would that also apply if it was a nurse giving the vaccine in your practice? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what, what, what you were asking the MA to do would be the same thing in, in terms of if you had a, a registered nurse or an LPN in your office but who can administer the vaccines, right. obviously. Correct. But they would also have to get the okay from the APRN or the MD before they administer the vaccine. Correct. Right. So it, just, it, it would be, it's, it's um, analogous to giving a medication. Right. So you need to have the dose and the route of administration and, and that's, that comes from the the provider, right? And you, and then we'll go to whoever is the their, whether it's um, right now an RN LPN um, would would do it, and then the MA that would be with this bill that would be added to their um, their repertoire. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair.